Hello, my name is Pierre Harry, and I'm a product specialist with Aviva Select California. In this video, I will show you how to create a Microsoft SQL Express database and connect it to Aviva Edge 2020 to share data. In order to unlock full functionality, please ensure that you have SQL Server Express, SQL Server Management Studio, and Aviva Edge 2020 installed on your machine. There are four steps involved in this process. Step one, we will configure the SQL user with the appropriate security settings in SQL Server Studio. Next, we will create the database in SQL Server Studio. Then we will restart the SQL Server, which is a very important and overlooked step. And four, we will set up the database connection in Aviva Edge 2020. So the first thing we're going to do here is configure the SQL user and assign the appropriate security settings. So let's open up the SQL Server Management Studio. Go ahead and click on Connect. Now inside of SQL Server Management Studio, First thing we're going to do is right click on the server, select properties, and under security, let's make sure that SQL Server and Windows authentication mode is selected for the server authentication. Click OK. And now we're going to add a new login. So under security, let's expand the folder, right click on logins, and then click on new login. Let's give it a name such as Edge, for example. Select SQL Server Authentication. And then we're going to enter a password and confirm it. Please note that these password requirements are pretty stringent, so make sure that the password you select is going to satisfy these requirements, right? And if it doesn't, it will give you an error message, so you'll know. We can leave all the other settings as default. But under the status tab, let's go ahead and make sure that the login is set to enabled. And then go ahead and click on OK. And you'll see that the Edge user is populated under the Logins folder right here. At this point, we can proceed to step two and create the SQL database. So let's go ahead and right click on the Databases folder and select New Database. And let's give it a name. Let's give it something like Edge DB, for example. You can go ahead and leave all the other configuration options as blank, but please make note, or as default, excuse me, but please make note of all the other options and file groups that are option that are available here. All of these are parameters that you can change if you want. Go ahead and click on OK. And that should create the database, which you can see right here, Edge DB. Now, if you open it, you'll see that for the time being, if you expand the tables folder, there's only these four table, these four folders here, right, showing. Make note of that because we'll confirm later that the Edge to SQL Server connection is properly configured when some of these tables are populate below these four that are right here. So now that we've created the Edge database, we actually need to go back to our login that we created, the Edge login, and edit one more thing. Let's open up the Edge login here. And what we need to do is make sure that the right server roles and user mapping configuration settings are set correctly. So inside of server roles, go ahead and make sure that you select sysadmin, check off that box. And under user mapping, Check off the box for the new database. In my case, it's Edge DB. And make sure that you select DB underscore owner on the bottom right here for the database role membership for that database. And what that will do is it will give you all of the administrator privileges that you need for that login associated with this database to establish that Edge link correctly. Let's go ahead and click OK. And we are done configuring the SQL Server environment. So at this point, we can go ahead and close the environment. 
Next, we have to restart SQL Server in order to deploy these changes. This is a very important and often overlooked step. Your edge to SQL link may not work properly if this isn't performed because the login and database that you just configured aren't going to be effectuated properly. So let's go ahead and open the SQL Server Configuration Manager once you close the Studio environment. Go ahead and navigate to SQL Server. In my case, it's MSS uh, QL Server. In your case, the server name might be a little different, but this is the one that you want to restart. So let's go ahead and right click on it and click on restart. So you should get a pop-up dialog box that says that it's stopping the service. And it's running again. So we stopped it and turned it back on. If you want to play it safe and make sure, you can go ahead and click on stop and then manually click on start again instead of just doing restart. Let's go ahead and close this. Now we can move on to the next step and set up the database connection in Aviva Edge 2020. So let's open up the program, Aviva Edge 2020. In the ribbon on the top side here, let's navigate to the project tab and then select the options folder. Inside of the options folder, go ahead and click on default database. And this is where you configure the default database that we're gonna connect this particular edge project to. So first thing you'll see is the connection string and the first cell right here. And we need to configure that to point to that correct database. So in th inside this data link properties dialog box, you'll see the server name up on top. By default, it should be set correctly. In my case, it is. But, you know, just double check and make sure that your server name here matches the server name that the database was associated to inside of SQL Studio. Step two involves using a specific username and password. So let's go ahead and select that and enter, in our case, it's Edge and the password. So the login that you set inside a SQL Server earlier. <clears throat> And then we're going to select the database. And in this case, it's the edge DB, right? So select the database that you have created and associated with that user account. And then we're going to go ahead and click on test connection. You'll see there that it says test connection succeeded. So that link is properly established. Once the connection has been successfully tested, let's close this dialog box. And you'll see that the connection string is correctly populated. And now let's enter the username and password once again and click OK to close the dialog box. You can close this one too. Now, at this point, it might seem like the link is fully configured and fully sharing data between SQL Server and Aviva Edge, but this is only partially true and it's a common pitfall with this process. So in order for the data to be fully shared, Edge also needs to enter runtime node first. That is an important prerequisite for this to work. You actually have to enter runtime in order to have your program running, right? In order to get the data uh, sharing to SQL Server. So let's go ahead and enter runtime here by clicking on the play button on the top left to enter the runtime mode of our project here. Let's give it a second. And here is the runtime window. Now we can reopen our SQL Server Management Studio, which I have saved down here. The icon is on the taskbar down here. And we can open the Server Management Studio to confirm that the data is being shared from, C uh, from Edge to SQL. So let's go ahead and connect here. And then we're going to expand the databases folder, expand the Edge DB folder specifically, and open up the tables folder. And if you remember earlier in this video, I mentioned that there were only four folders here by default initially, right? And now there's a fifth one, dbo.alarm history. And so that's how you can tell that the data is coming from Edge into your SQL database here. And we can confirm by right-clicking on it. And then, for example, selecting the top 1,000 rows. And here's the SQL code. And you'll see the results right underneath it. That'll show the data that is coming in from the Edge pro, uh, project. And we can confirm that this is the same data that we see over here. Machine one state.current, machine one.production count. 
right here. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you guys next time.